Alexander beat the starting lineup for your Phoenix Suns. In the middle, standing 6 foot 11, number 22, Miles Plumlee. on the road trip here before heading back to New York. They're in fifth place in the East, a team to be reckoned with for sure. When I look at New York, they've just been having an outstanding season. I mean, no other way to describe it. They're making strides in the stands and playing excellent basketball. And they've got to like their position as they approach the postseason, playing their best basketball of the year right now. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's check out who's on the floor, courtesy of Gatorade. And New York, looking at who they've got, Mello and Bargnani at the three and four. Calderon is out there with Iman Shumper. And it's D'Alembert in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. And so it's the Suns getting on the board first. Calderon kicks to Anthony. Six to shoot. From the stripe. Here's D'Alembert. No luck. So Phoenix will take it the other way. They are coming off that win against Atlanta. Yeah, that was a strange game. Very shaky defensive performance by their opponent. But hey, they took advantage of it. Yeah, I'd go along with that. I mean, the game wasn't handed to them, but they definitely didn't have to work as hard as they should have. Now it appears an injury out on the floor, and that does not look like any fun. Yeah, and as many times as you see it, Clark, you never like to see a player have to come out of the game with an injury especially when it's your own teammate. But the other guys just have to step up in the meantime to make up for his absence. Next guy up is what we say. Smith checked in for D'Alembert. Anthony with a screen on Dragic. And Shumper kicks to Anthony. Trains it from beyond the arc. Carmelo Anthony, one of the league's elite scorers, no doubt. No question about it, Kevin. I mean, really versatile as a threat. He can back it down because he's strong. A lot stronger than people realize. He can bump and grind with the best of them, and he can face you up. He's got the quick release. He can pull up off the dribble. He can catch and shoot. He can post. He can get to the offensive glass. And I think he's become a much more consistent threat from long range as well. So that's why he's got a career scoring average of around 25 a game. The defense just couldn't recover in time. Yeah, the D pretty much went brain neutral on that one, Clark. Wouldn't, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, sir. I, I like you, that phrase. Yeah, I don't use that phrase very often, but to me, that's what happened. Oh. He shifted the, the brain into neutral. Yes, he did. <laughs> that was embarrassing. Oh, look out, oh, man. The rim is shaking. The rim rattler. Just a remarkable jam. These fans' jaws are on the ground right now. Yeah, that is showtime stuff right there. Major highlight reel material. Left side, jumper. That ball's nice feed this time from Jose Calderon. And just under two and a half minutes elapsed here in the first. And it's time for an injury report. Guys, I had a moment to catch up with the Knicks head athletic trainer. It's bad news, I'm afraid. He's saying that it looks like a broken ankle, which can truly be a devastating injury. 
For a team that had hoped to be making some noise in the playoffs, this injury scare was the last thing they wanted to see. We'll see how it turns out, guys. Thanks, Doris. Uh, guys, the only thing you can wish for is that the prognosis isn't quite mm -hmm. as bad as they're making it out to be. Yeah, exactly, Kevin. Um, I don't know, though. I mean, one way or another, it seems to me as though it's going to be a long time before we see him back in uniform. Yeah, such a shame, guys. You, you always hate to hear uh, of any player getting injured, and, and this one, this does not sound good. New York Knicks were ranked as the NBA's most valuable franchise recently, and with team value skyrocketing, the Knicks came in at around one and a half billion. That's a B, billion. And of course, for the Knicks, a huge part of their value comes from playing in the Big Apple. Yeah, I agree with that, Kevin. The business and media capital of the United States, you know, they go out of their way to attract the big stars to the games courtside seats for the top names. That helps give the Knicks an allure, kind of a glamour that a lot of franchises don't have. Well, J.R. Smith, a guy who can take your breath away with his talent one moment and then exasperate you the next. Unbelievable talent, but he can be erratic offensively, especially with his shot selection. He misses the free throw. And J.R. Smith closing in on 30 years of age. He's been fined almost $1 million over the course of his NBA career. And, you know, playing in China, he was fined over $1 million in a single season. How do you do that? One night he ordered $3,000 worth of room service on the team dime just to see if they keep coming. Come on, Kevin. I mean, what is this guy thinking about here? Why do you call us? We can be eating some of that food. <laughs> <laughs> Give an assist there, not yes. for the pass, but for the solid screen set on the inside that freed him up and made the layup possible. They set the screen. The Beast passes to Plumley. Here's the Beast, defended by Bargnani. Knocks it down in the bucket from the Beast. The Beast's got his third basket of the night. For the New York Knicks, they come in off a good outing against Golden State. Well, Kevin, they constructed a perfect offensive game plan going into that game, and it was uh, quickly apparent how powerless the defense was to stop it. Powerless is a good way to put it, Steve. We're unlikely to see that many uncontested baskets again anytime soon. That's good. Bargnani's got his first points of the night. Boy, where was the box out? Too easy on that second chance opportunity. Yeah, no box out is what happened there. Those kind of mistakes on the glass will kill the team. Phoenix making some changes. He's checked in for Plumlee. P.J. Tucker comes in for Green, and it's Eric Bledsoe in for Goran Dragic. And then for New York, Smith checked in for Bargnani. Tim Hardaway Jr. comes in for Shumpert, and it's Larkin in for Jose Calderon. The Beast passes to Tolliver. Morris dishes to Tucker. Five on the clock. The feed now to Tolliver. Pulls up from the corner, and he hits the jump shot. 114 left in the first quarter. Here's Larkin outside Hardaway. Kicks it to Larkin. Smith left side. Wide open look. Good. Smith's got his first best. How about the passing here? Moving the ball without any thought, without any agenda. It's hard to overstate. All the points they've scored on assist today. Beautiful to watch. Pass to Morris. Good work defensively by Smith. Knicks have gone 6 of 10 from the field in this ballgame. Smith, no good. That would have tied it. The defense was ready for him that time, and they had to be. He is so powerful in the lane. And Bledsoe, here we go. Anthony with the block. And here is Hardaway. He had 16 points in the win against Golden State. And now the Suns, a fast break. Bledsoe's running. Passes it to the Beast. Expanding his range. That is good. The Beast's got 11 points. Nine seconds left to play in the first quarter. Outside Anthony. One second left. 
A free-flowing first quarter. Great scoring through one. Suns lead by five. Stay with us as we get set to bring you the second quarter right after this. Tune in this Thursday, March 19th. Anthony Davis and the New Orleans Pelicans take on Goran Dragic and the Phoenix Suns. It's the real deal. And Buenos Noches basketball fans, it's Latin night here on 2K Sports. And you might have noticed the custom jerseys worn by the players. And what stands out to you from the Suns in this one? Solid first quarter for this club. They came out strong and they put together some nice momentum here. Steve, I like the looks they've gotten on offense. A lot of good ones. With a different look, Markeith Morris has checked in for Miles Plumley. Green comes in for P.J. Tucker. Goran Dragic has checked in for Eric Bloodson. And it's the Beast in for Thomas. And a new group in for the Knicks. Arnani has checked in for Anthony. Mon Shepard has come in for early. J.R. Smith's checked in for Tim Hardaway Jr. And it's Calderon in for Shane Larkin. And New York looking at who they've got. On the wings, it's Smith and Shepard. Smith is out there with Bargnani. And it's Calderon in at the one spot. Suns trail by five. You know, Bargnani, generally a pretty, pretty reserved guy overall, tends to go about his business. But there were moments last year where he got teed up for talking trash, so he's got some fire in him. And Doris Burke has something for us. Hey, Doris. Well, Kevin, Derek Fisher going straight from his playing to his new job as the Knicks head coach. He brushed aside questions about his lack of experience. saying basketball is a game that I'm experienced in playing, understanding, leading in, and helping achieve the greatest gift in the world as an athlete, and that's being a champion. Not bad, guys. No lack of confidence. He understands winning doors. Thanks. The baseline J off the mark. And I remember that play you were talking about with Bargnani, Clark. He got into it with Kevin Van of all people and got the tip in the process. He definitely will play with fire at times. And, you know, to get a tech talking to KG of all people, uh, who's a known trash talker and one of the best in the history of the league. People see Bargnani as, Jason. you think he just loafs around for stretches and is nonchalant, but I think there's a fire inside that guy that you know, the Knicks would like to see more often. Pass to the Beast. That's good. The Beast's got eight here in the quarter. You know, he started out hot, and he's only gotten hotter. He, he could be in for one of those games. Now, here's Calderon, averaging eight points a game. That's a two from Smith. Busts the J after the KG pass fake. Smith's got his second bucket of the night. Guys back and forth this first half. Well, five lead changes early on, guys, as we grapple back and forth. <laughs> this could be a, a back and forth game all the way, guys, the way it's being played. This is fun to watch. And the first half ends in a close one. Knicks out front. They lead by one. And now we'll send it down to Doris Burke, who's standing by courtside. Yo, Carmelo, after this first half of play, what do you believe the team needs to focus on from here on out? Just communication and trusting one another. When somebody get beat, the next guy got his back, and we're just trying to get up and down, get going somewhere somehow. For the most part, we did pretty good. A couple of adjustments on the defensive end, make some shots, and we'll be fine. Melo, thanks for the time, guys. Over to you. All right, Doris, thank you, and we'll be back after halftime for the start of the third quarter. All right, guys. 
I want to go over some things before we get back out there. First of all, a big nod to how well we've taken care of the basketball. We're not taking any unnecessary chances, and that's meant very few turnovers. We showed some good upside with our offense. Let's keep things fresh. I don't want us to get caught in a rut. Keep the ball moving and run different plays each time down. And guys, I don't want too many of us under the glass at the defensive end. I want to be sure that we always have at least a couple of guys getting up court, ready to receive the outlet pass and get an easy bucket on the break. If we go out there and show the killer instinct I know we have, this is not a team that can stay with us. Let's up that intensity. The third quarter now beginning. Both sides looking to pull away in the last half of the game. What can you say? The Beast, an impressive effort here today. Yeah, he's been a revelation here tonight. Clark scoring almost at will there in the half. Hard to imagine he'll keep it up for the next two quarters, but you never know. New York's gone three of seven tonight from three-point territory. The Beast, he's in a shooting guard. Inside, it's Morris and Plumlee. Gerald Green out there with Dragic. Who's out there for Phoenix? Here's the Beast, and that's good. And it's Dragic with the assist. Dragic has got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. Shepard up top. Smith sets the pick for Shumpton. Anthony, no one around. Again, the miss by Anthony. The Suns leading. It's Trogic with the drive, and he gets it to go. Trogic has got eight. Whatever their plan was defensively that time, it, it didn't work. Not if it results in that shot. Inside. And there's Shumpert. That's good on the assist by Calderon. Nice move and finish. I think the halftime break gave him a second win. He looks fresh. Well, Jose Calderon, a huge boost offensively at point guard. He's a terrific floor general, sets up his teammates nicely, takes good care of the ball, and he's a top-tier marksman. In the NBA, we call those guys lasers. He can do it off the bounce or spotting up. Here's Dragic. Eight points for him. Feeds it to Morris. Here's the beast, guarded by Shumpert. Here's the beast, and foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. And it's gonna go on Amon Shumpert. Some fantastic numbers for the beast. 22 points, he's drained four three-pointers here as well. With more to come, maybe. The way his shot looks tonight, looks like he's going for a big night. A different look for New York. Early, he's checked in for Jason Smith. Hardaway comes in for Shumpert. And it's Larkin in for Jose Calderon. Larkin kicks to Anthony. Can't get it to go. So Phoenix will take it the other way. Victory eluded them last time in New York when they took on the Knicks. And Kevin, they put so much effort into the final few minutes of regulation in that game that they were pretty burned out in the overtime period. Yeah, that's an excellent call by you, Steve. I thought there was a little bit of a letdown for them in OT. Knicks trail by five. Okay, well, let's check in with Doris Burke reporting from our sideline in this game. Doris, take it away. Thank you, Kevin. As everyone knows, Amari Stoudemire has had to battle back from his share of numerous injuries, and he switched to a vegan diet in order to help stay healthy. He said it was tough, and when asked which foods he missed the most, he said, I love chicken, and I love Chilean sea bass. I missed it, but I wanted to stay strong. Guys? Interesting. Thanks, Doris. Larkin kicks to Hardaway. Down low. Here's Anthony. And he overshot that one, missing. He's been anything but his usual self this quarter. It's actually been ugly to see. And Green gets it to go. Well, I'll tell you what, getting out in transition has really been a big part of this run they're on now. Well, that's the best way to score in bunches. Just run and drop a bucket in before the team can set up his defense.
Some changes for Phoenix. Anthony Tolliver. Keith Morris. P.J. Tucker comes in for Gerald Green. And it's Eric Bledsoe in for Goran Dragic. And a switcher also for New York. Smith has checked in. Larkin, the pass to Hardaway. To stop the run. Rebounded by Tucker. I don't know if it's just me, but he's looked a step slow since the start of the quarter. His shooting has really suffered. Doris Burke has an update for us. Doris? Hi, Kevin. Derek Fisher was just going over the plan with his team. He talked to his guys about the importance of functioning as a unit, not as individuals, and on the need to help each other find open shots on the perimeter. He said also that their offense needs to be a patient one. He told them, don't rush things. Use as much of that shot clock as you need to. Coach was not wasting any time and altering their strategy here in the second half. And Kevin, he's going to have to hope those changes take effect quickly. Great. Thanks for the report, Doris. Phoenix leading by 10. Bloodzo issues to Tolliver. Some nice ball movement here by the Suns. Here's the Beast. And the shot is good. The Beast's got seven now in this quarter. Boy, what a half from the field they're having. They're going to extend that lead if they stay this high. Well, they've taken it up another notch, Clark. Looking very confident out there. Here's Larkin. To the inside. The basket drops, and he gets fouled on the shot. One free throw coming his way. Well, I tell you what, that is a lot harder than it appears. You've got to get your body angle just right to shield you from the defense. Isaac. Good ball movement. It's so far a scoring breakdown for Phoenix. How about the three-point shooting we're seeing so far, guys? Amazing. Let's go. You're in. Dang, about time. Bloodsoe. And it's Drogic in for Thomas. Shumpert is checked in for the Knicks. Calderon comes in for Shane Larkin. And on the four for New York here in the fourth. Calderon at the one. Hardaway Jr. at the two. Amon Shumpert is out there with J.R. Smith. And it's Anthony in at the center position. Six to shoot. There's the screen. Calderon for three. Rebound by the Suns. Morris has got six rebounds now in the game. Green is checked in for Phoenix. The Beast comes in for Ennis. And New York with a change here, too. Bargnani's checked in. Here's the Beast. He's guarded by Calderon. Now Dragic. There's the pass to the Beast. And that's good. And it's Dragic with the assist. That's 28 points for the Beast. Wow, such a steady hand. He's the one responsible for getting them this late lead. Can't argue with that at all, Steve. His shooting percentage has been off the charts. Calderon. No good. Well, what appeared to be an easy two points just... Never materialized. And the foul on Carmelo Anthony. Foul. That is his first foul of the game. That's his first personal foul. First team foul. Outside Dragic. Passes it to the Beast. Six on the shot clock. Shumper with some nice D. And they force the miss with that good defensive rotation. They're playing well together as a unit. Smith, no good. Phoenix leading by 15. From deep. Another three for Phoenix. Boy, as he picked it up in the second half. He's on fire. And so here is New York. Looking to get on the board here in the fourth still. Calderon kicks to Bargnani. He dishes it to Smith. He feeds it to Carmelo. Shot clock at six. The jump shot from the baseline is right on target. 
Tell you what, he is so difficult to guard, especially on a shot like that one. Here's the Beast, guarded by Shumpert. And that's going to be a treble. He went a decent amount of time before his first turnover there. It's really been a good, safe stretch of basketball from him to this point. Miles Plumlee's checked in for Anthony Tolliver. Quincy Acey's checked in for the Knicks. Green against Anthony. Right side, Shumpert. Anthony, the pass to Shumpert. Back to Anthony. With a floater, and he gets it to go. Anthony's got four points this quarter. We're in the final quarter of play here, three minutes in. Rogic, the pass to the Beast. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. Well, the popularity of the three-pointer at an all-time high. Stephen, I'm sure you can appreciate that. The lead even discussed adding a four-point line. What about that? Please make this go away, Kevin. I mean, it's just crazy. It's way too extreme. I think even the three-point shot is probably overdone to this point. So I would say 100% no, I am against a four-pointer. The Knicks making a switch here. Outlaws checked in. You know, typically he's just a role player, but when he does score, it allows the offense to be more balanced. Outside Dragic. Pass to the Beast. And he gets it to go. The Beast's got 13 points here in the second half alone. And if you think about the four-point line and the possibility of that, a lot of players already shoot from way beyond the three-point line. Guys like Steph Curry, Jamal Crawford. I think it would be exciting to see. I don't think it would. But uh, I'd want the distance to be far enough away from the goal that players wouldn't shoot those four-pointers all the time. It would be a uh, specialty shot and one that wouldn't become a real significant part of the game. Smith, no good. It's been a great day for them on the boards, Clark. That's definitely been a major factor in building this big lead. And, you know, from a number standpoint, the advantage might not be that large, but they have been manhandling them inside. All right, let's go over to the sideline with Doris Burke. Thank you, guys. I had a chance to find out what Jeff Hornacek was discussing with his players. He told them to be looking to attack in the open floor. He doesn't want them getting slowed down in half-court sets. He wants the fast break to be a major weapon. He also told them that he wants to see multiple passes on every possession. He said that was the key to getting the best shot each time down. Guys, we'll see how Coach's direction pays off as this one winds down. Kevin? Thanks, Doris. And both free throws good for Green. And I think some have worried that a four-point line would make the, the league too perimeter-oriented. I, I think it's insane. I mean, the three-point line already stretches the floor and, and gives you an advantage if you have outside shooting. A four-point line, to me, is, is beyond a rule. It's, it's like a gimmick. I don't think it's going to happen. The Beast and some very quick points for him on that possession. The Beast's got 15 points in just the second half. Knicks trail by 18. Bargnani has screen on Dragic. Calderon dishes to Bargnani. And the foul called on Markeith Morris. Uh, best way to shoot the rock. E.J. Tucker comes in for Green. For New York, they've gone 5 of 10, 50% from the field. Well, this is going to end in a lopsided victory, obviously. I love the tenacity and aggressiveness and the ability to close. You really have to give it up for the Suns. The sheer volume of three-pointers was the deciding factor tonight, it seemed. Yeah, they sink one, Kevin, and then they do it again. It worked. 
And so taking a look at their record, a nice milestone they'll be picking up tonight. 30 wins on the year now. You know, and this gives them a measure of revenge for what happened in the first meeting between these two clubs. That one really did not go their way. And as interconference opponents, Steve, tonight was their only chance to get that revenge. They won't see each other in the regular season again until next year. You look at the stats and you'll see just how dominant a game this was for the Beast. And a big part of their success was his ability to keep the ball moving and finding guys when they would flash open. New York, no good that time either. That's not a sight you see very often. I mean, he has a great feel for that jump shot, especially when he's open. From deep three-point range, can't get it to fall. And so it's Phoenix easily grabbing this one. They put on a show tonight, thoroughly controlling each end of the... I don't care if you're in grade school or the NBA. This game is all about solid fundamentals. Let's get some extra work in here. Got to get better every day. That's what I'm talking about. Good efforts yields great results every time. Way to work. All right, listen up, guys. Coach wanted me to go over some more points of emphasis. Today it's going to be getting shooters open on offense and giving up nothing inside on defense. So let's jump right in, shall we? From time to time, we may decide the situation is right to really focus on getting our shooters open for high percentage looks. We have some excellent marksmen on this team, and giving them the best shot opportunities will give us a better chance at winning games. Now let's take a look at some film and we can get a little more in depth on how we can get our shooters open for shots. On this one, the shooter uses a really solid screen to perfection. Gets a nice quality open shot. We need to set and come off screens just like that so our shooters can get open. And here, you see the ball handler driving to the basket. The defense collapses, so he just kicks the ball out to an open shooter. Easy jumper, easy bucket, simple, right? So when coach says he wants to get shooters open, you'll know what to do. Moving on, let's take a look at another item on Coach's list. Nothing inside. 
Coach really doesn't like giving up easy baskets down low. When we run up against teams who are good at scoring inside, he's probably going to ask you guys to take that away from our opponent. And when he does, we'll need to make it a point to not give up easy buckets in the paint. Here's a nice look at proper rotation and a nice collapse inside that forces the ball handler to take a tough, contested shot. That's exactly the kind of interior defense coach will be expecting from you guys. And here on this drive to the hole, the bigs weren't there. No rim protection, no chance at a block. We need to make sure we do a good job at protecting the basket. So when coach tells us he wants nothing inside, you should know what to do. Don't let him down. That should have you guys fully up to speed on what to do when coach calls for any of these points of emphasis. Let's head out and we'll be back at it tomorrow for practice. No doubt. We good, coach. Thank you.